Continue to have great things happening in the city of Houston. And this has actually been a good week for the youth of Houston. And it's going to continue to be a good week with the announcements that we have today. Uh, we're announcing the launch of a new collaborative effort to broaden the number of young people who really reach for the stars in careers in aviation and aerospace. We are creating a new Houston Airport System Aviation Club, which will provide an education and learning experience for students and promote the pursuit of post-secondary degrees in aerospace or aviation-related careers in community colleges and, and universities. Houston obviously has a legacy as a world leader in aerospace. And we fully expect to continue that leadership, and we're going to aggressively pursue opportunities for full-time adult jobs in aviation and aerospace in Houston. But let's make sure that we also have young people who are excited about those careers. Uh, we want to ensure that the moniker Space City continues to apply to Houston, and that Young people who go to school in Houston will not only see the opportunities, but will pursue the opportunities in aviation and aerospace. Uh, our new Houston Airport System Aviation Club is being offered in two Houston area high schools this year, Sterling High School and Carnegie Vanguard High School. Membership is open to students who are in good standing with a minimum GPA of uh, 2.5 maintain satisfactory attendance at meetings throughout the year, and have a desire and passion <coughs> for exploring post-secondary educational and career opportunities in aerospace or aviation. I know that um, Sterling High School has been an aviation magnet for, I believe, 25 years. Uh, so this is in line with that. But we want to enhance the experience and, and very clearly show the next steps and, and what's possible. The club is supported by a broad coalition of community sponsors. They include Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, NASA Johnson Space Center, Texas Southern University, San Jacinto College, Lone Star College, obviously Houston Independent School District, <coughs> Sterling High School, Carnegie Vanguard High School, Bay Area Houston Economic Partnership, and of course the City of Houston and the Houston Airport System. Although the club is offered in just two schools this year, uh, there are plans to expand to additional area high schools next school year, and uh, we're going to seek to match the desires of the students who want to participate with uh, the appropriate response from uh, the various community partners. Uh, there'll be a big kickoff for this new club this weekend when all the students are invited to Wings Over Houston at uh, Ellington Airport. And if you weren't already in love with flying, that'll certainly uh, lure you in. Uh, but this initiative is the brainchild of Airport System Director Mario Diaz, who is literally living his youthful dream of a career in aviation and uh, as a pilot. So I now want to ask um, Mario to come forward and talk a little bit about how he conceived this and uh, why we're moving forward. Yeah. Mayor, thank you so very much. I am very, very happy to be thrilled to be here this morning to share with you the announcement that the Houston Aviation Club is now active for the first meeting. Um, gathering to, is scheduled for this weekend uh, at Ellington Airport where uh, we will enjoy the performance of the United States Precision Flying Team, none other than the Blue Angels. I'm excited, too, about the prospect for growth in the aviation and aerospace industries uh, here in Houston, where together with our partners in these industries, we intend to keep Houston in the vanguard of the
the transition from a federal space program to a commercial space program. But mostly, I am very, very optimistic about the opportunities to be granted to students of high school and school students who take interest in aviation and world space as potential career paths by joining Houston Aviation Clubs. Um, it is for them um, and the excitement of learning that we hope will lead to more of them staying in school, graduating, attending a two-year or four-year um, college or university, and entering the world of aviation and space as professionals ready to make a contribution to man's progression into space. Just as the 20th century was about the development and the evolution of aviation, that began in 1903 with the Wright brothers' demonstration of heavy than air flight at Kitty Hawk and ended with aircraft as large and sophisticated as the Boeing 787 Dreamliner and the 747 800 freighter and intercontinental passenger aircraft. The century, the 21st century, will be about the evolution and development of space. Um, with the first commercial space launch, um, the uh, award going to Scale Composites, the Zari Prize in 2004 going to Scale, scale Composites, uh, with the White Knight launch in 2004, and will end, well, who knows where it will end um, this century. Each meeting of the club held once a month will focus on three things. Teaching students something about aviation and aerospace, providing them with an opportunity to share an enriching experience of total immersion in aviation and aerospace, and understanding that we care about them and their progress, and we will express that caring through mentoring and coaching all along their path to success. Thank you very much. I'm going to ask uh, Bob Mitchell, President of Bayer Houston Economic Partnership, to come forward. Uh, we obviously need the, the help of the partnership, but the partnership is a great teammate for the city of Houston and a whole range of activities. Absolutely. We've been great teammates. Again, I'm Bob Mitchell, president of the Bay Area Houston Economic Partnership. And you know, our region is home to NASA Johnson Space Center and Ellington Field. We're extremely proud of our rich history in flight, including human spaceflight. And the robust aviation and aerospace traditions, cultures, careers that have grown in Houston over time. And we're very, and we have every reason to be proud. One of the highest orders of aviation and professionalism involves NASA and astronauts. And Houston has been home to NASA's astronaut training program and has trained every astronaut in the rigors of space flight. Dating back to the Mercury, Gemini, the Apollo, and the space shuttle programs, today we have 55 aerospace companies located in our region that employ over 14,000 professionals. So students, listen up. You are in a very good place to pursue your aviation careers. And it's not just space careers that we're talking about. Houston is home to many airframe power, power plant maintenance and technician jobs all in the aviation field. And these are high paying jobs, many of which require advanced, advanced studies, certifications and degrees. We are actively recruiting more of the kind of companies that would hire these type of individuals on a daily basis. So for these reasons, we're thrilled that the city of Houston, the Houston airport system, and HISD is teaming up with HISD to launch these aviation clubs at Sterling and Carnegie Vanguard High Schools. And we look forward to seeing these efforts grow to, grow to meet the workforce challenges which will impact the aviation industry for years to come. It's imperative that we create a pipeline of students to make sure that we have the employees that we need to re when we recruit these companies here to work. I want to thank the mayor and Diaz and uh, Director Diaz for all their good work. Now I have uh, now we have three uh, three students. Did they hide in the back? Come on up here. <laughs> Come on up. I'll be here. And you might get a moment on TV if you get in close. So, uh, so who wants to speak? I think you're you first. Okay. Uh, well, good morning. I'm April Demi Cruz. I'm a senior student at Sterling High School. I am also an aviation student in our magnet program. Um, what I can really say is that I'm really excited. We have anticipated an aviation club for a while now. Um, the student body and my peers and my classmates and friends have always wanted somewhere where we could belong as an aviation body, not just our program. So we're really excited. Um, we're really grateful for this opportunity and for all the partnerships that have been offered to us.
not required for Hi, I'm Jesse Soto, and I'm currently a senior in the Sterling MJC Magnet program. And I guess I'll talk a bit about the program since they pretty much covered everything else. Well, the Sterling MJC Magnet program has been probably a really fantastic experience for me. Uh, since I was a kid, I always dreamed about it, but I never ever thought that I'd actually get a chance to live that dream of being a pilot, looking up in the sky and seeing airplanes going all over the place. I thought that was like something only high income people and kids would be able to achieve, but then the Sterling Aviation Magnet Program really, really opened up lots and lots of doors for me. And I'm extremely grateful for that. I'm currently, I'm probably about one month away from getting my pet license. To be clear, this is a, uh, it's going to be rigorous. This is intended to immerse the young people who participate in the business of aviation. Uh, they've already self-selected with their passion for aviation, but aviation is big business all around the world, but especially in Houston. And uh, <coughs> participation of Bay Area Houston Economic Partnership, the participation of uh, corporate sponsors as we more fully develop that will be important. But the participation of Lone Star College, San Jacinto College, Texas Southern University, Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University shows that this is intended to link these young people who are in high school uh, and with a career path into aviation through these educational institutions. So I'm uh, very happy to have uh, the various universities represented today. And uh, if I could, uh, I know I have uh, Principal Mitchell is here too. Principal Mitchell, right right, yes, me. right behind me. Please, come, come on up and talk about, uh, about what's going on. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, my name is Dale Mitchell. I'm the principal at Sterling High School. And as uh, Mayor Parker alluded, uh, Sterling has a rich history of an NEA aviation program. And as you've met our students, you know, um, they're great students. They're, they're dedicated to what they do. And as a principal, I like to have things under control, which never really happens. But it's nice to know that there's this pathway for our students, not only in high school, but to follow through with these great, wonderful universities and our partnership as we go through these experiences. And actually, the first one is this Friday. As we go through these experiences, uh, focusing on aerospace engineering and on, on, on um, aviation, to know that this partnership goes on from the high school to the college level, and then even back here to the Houston area, so that we can continue to grow not only those relationships, but those students and those careers for them as well. So we are very excited. It's great to work with Mr. Diaz and, and be a part of his dream and his vision. We're very thankful for that opportunity. So I would again like to say on behalf of HISD, thank you to all the uh, organizations involved, the universities, and Mr. Diaz for his dream. Um, we are proud to be a part of it. We hope to continue this relationship and build as we move forward. So thank you again for this opportunity. Mario, I'm going to ask you to, to come up with me again because this really, this was Mario's idea and it will really rest with him to make sure that it gets off to a good start. Uh, I'll open it up to see if anybody has any questions. So Director Mario, do you have an actual facility for these young students to work and do you have some simulated time as well as working in your office as interns or either at the aviation? Do you have an actual facility? You have three airports. <laughs> <laughs> I have three very big facilities. Um, and, and let me explain a little bit what we mean about total immersion. So, for example, um, you know, when I was uh, in high school myself, and I was a member of an aviation club, what it meant for me at the time was I met maybe once a week in some uh, classroom, and I had an opportunity to glue together some models, some aviation models. But I never knew what happened or what was happening beyond, beyond the four walls of that classroom. Uh, where the military was conducting operations, where um, the uh, commercial aircraft, the airports of the region, and how they were served. What was happening in aerospace? I had no clue of that. That was something that I had learned on my own. What we're talking about here is taking an aviation program, as good as it is in Sterling, and then bringing these students out for, let's like, say, two hours each month. And rather than talking to them in abstract terms about space, having them have a conversation with aerospace engineers. Or how about better an astronaut? Or how about a pilot of a 787 Dreamliner? Or um, a mission control operations uh, person? Or a paymaster um, that does weight and balance on these very large aircraft? It's 
we're looking to provide the intellectual capital that Houston will need if, in fact, Houston is going to remain the vanguard of the transition from the federal space program to a commercial space program. We are, we are really at the first level, the first floor. There is so much potential, so much opportunity, but we need these students, and we need a pipeline of students to continue to provide that intellectual capital. And one of the ways to do it, one of the ways to keep kids excited about school is to get them immersed and excited about life so that they can see the relevance of the jobs that they will be taking and how that relates to what they're doing in the classroom. Director Diaz, does this, does this sort of assume the federal government will play less of a role here? With, um, you know, the, I think it's independent of what the federal government does. Um, the federal government has a program of its own, um, and I'm sure Houston will get its fair share of that program for missions to Mars and the moon and beyond, um, uh, new space stations with uh, international partners. Uh, what we're talking about is really taking the fledgling steps as you might imagine, in 1903, when the <coughs> basically took that legend step and demonstrated heavier than air um, flight was possible. And imagine a lot of people said, no, nah, those contractions. Um, but look at where it's led to. Today, the fledging aerospace industry is about $300 billion industry. The transportation component of that $300 billion is $60 billion, 20% of that. And so it's, it's, uh, uh, there are a huge number of companies that are already demonstrated the capacity, <coughs> the ability of commercial private enterprises to start to enter the boundaries of space. And let's not think just of, 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 of aerospace as uh, human flight. Think about the others. There is zero gravity research. There is earth observation. There is energy development. Um, there is telecommunications, there is navigation, um, there are uh, satellite launch capabilities, um, and then there's also the growth of the industry itself in terms of aircraft assembly, engine dynamics, all of that that can be brought to Houston um, so that Houston can really participate in every aspect of the growth in aerospace, the transition from aviation, transition from our atmosphere into um, the limits of space. And Bob mentioned a lot of the, the private sector, I guess, right? I mean, is that what you're grooming these kids for, these private sector jobs, and maybe not so much for NASA? Every job. Not just, not just, uh, you know, something as simple as replacing me as director of the airport system. It's aviation aerospace. It's, it's uh, in education. Some of these students will um, earn doctorate degrees, and they will recycle back into the universities, and they will teach. Some of these students will become engineers. Some of these students will figure out along the path that they don't like differential equations. They don't, um, can't deal with them. And so they'll take different uh, approaches. But the point here is that there are just an infinite number of possibilities of jobs that um, the aviation and aerospace can afford these students. And Houston really needs to play a central role in that development. And through this program, this is one of the programs to develop this pipeline. We just, back in November, a lot of you remember when we assembled, the Houston Airport System with VEDA, we assembled a, uh, a forum of leaders in the city, in energy, transportation, medicine, um, education. We brought them all together. And the idea there was to ask, well, what does the private sector need in terms of education? And it was a discussion that went back and forth. And as we started to talk, it became apparent to me that we'll, they were using uh, metaphors like assembly pipes, where the raw material was students, the finished product was engineers and scientists um, and technicians and business people. And I thought to myself, wow, how could you make that happen? Well, you've got to provide the conduit, the pathways, the network to do that. And this program does just that. It maintains and establishes and um, keeps in place um, over a long period of time, the conduit or pathway where students can see very, very clearly how to get from point A to point B, how to get from a student to a degree um, and a professional in aviation and aerospace. And I think that'll make, and then along the way, to have a tremendous amount of fun. Because if you don't have fun, I don't believe you can really learn. And so this is, really, that's what this immersion is about, making sure that these kids are wowed. Um, and they see the benefit that they will jump out of bed in the morning
knock over their parents <laughs> on the way to the door to get to school to learn because they know that they're going to participate in an aero club meeting sometime now. So whether they want to design planes, fly planes, repair planes, direct planes uh, around the world, fill them with, or, or fill them with cargo, or, or all of the above, there are there are job opportunities and there are educational steps that they need to pursue, and we're going to try to help map out for each of these kids uh, a way to get there. How can you, um, how soon can you open this program up to all the schools in the ISD and in the school district and area? We're going to, we're going to, we're going to go with all delivered speed. You know, uh, Sterling and, and Carnegie Vanguard uh, are, are ready to go. As I said earlier, I, Sterling's been doing this for, for, for decades. Let's ramp it up, make sure that we get all the bugs out and, and that it's, it's ready to go. And I know that, uh, HISD and other school districts will be eager to work with us going forward. Is there a time schedule for this, um, uh, for this development, the, for the expansion? Because um, now you seem very excited about this and you, you, you show Mario, I think yeah. once we're going to, wants to ramp it up each year, he's a he's a gross guy and he, he does long term plans and so I'm sure he has a flow chart someplace that shows this exponential progression. Mario, is the spaceport idea still in play? Any, any progress? Any? Uh, we, we've done the preliminary <coughs> studies. Uh, as you know, we're just studying. It's just an idea at this point. We've done the preliminary studies, so we continue to study. We continue to work with, with AHAP. We continue to work with all of the aerospace industry in the, in the Clay Lake area, um, all of the universities, um, to make sure everything is in place. But one of the further things that drove this idea is when you, when you speak to the captains of the aerospace industry, I was at a forum one day and I was sitting next to the chief operating officer for x -Corp. And I asked him, I said, why did you decide to locate in Midland, Texas? Why not Houston? He said, well, because there's a lot of space. So I said to him, no, 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 you don't understand. Why did you decide to uh, locate in Midland? He goes, Mario, it's a lot of space. He goes, listen, these things are going to fail. <laughs> and you want a lot of space. But... Um, you know, there's opportunities perhaps in the future. I said, well, how important is intellectual capital in your plans to develop your company to take it to where you want to go? He says, absolutely, fundamentally important. Um, it is number one. And so I told him about the, the spaceport idea of spaceport in Houston, about the idea of the aviation clubs. He says, when can I come and talk to you? We, we are very, very interested. And so it's these ideas, these concepts that, you know, today, it's the intellectual capital. There, you know, in, a, in an age where we have such high employment, there are millions and millions and millions, literally, jobs going bad because we don't have the skill set um, to, to take on these jobs. And so what we're looking to do in Houston is address that problem in the education system by making it interesting, exciting, and providing a clear pathway to get there. Yes. Major Lisa Parker, on behalf of the